Hello, Laredo. Given the great strides made in 2021 in combating the coronavirus, my hope this year was to have delivered this address to you in person. Obviously, this is not possible due to the highly contagious Omicron variant, which is now plaguing our city and the world. Nonetheless, I stand before you today, a proud mayor reassuring you that I, along with all other city officials and health department leaders, have been and are entirely committed to you and we're doing everything in our power to aggressively combat this variant, using all the tools currently available and the best practices we developed last year in testing and vaccinating. With the good Lord on our side, we'll get through this fourth COVID-19 wave with less reported deaths. In this regard, I offer my heartfelt condolences to all the families and friends who have lost loved ones. Today, I'm coming to you on location from the city's Max A. Mandel Municipal Golf Course that overlooks the beautiful Rio Grande in North Laredo, acclaimed as one of the best public golf courses in Texas. I'd like to thank the staff for accommodating us today. I would like to recognize my esteemed colleagues, our city council members, many of whom you'll hear from this evening. Together, we've persevered. We've worked through the toughest challenges of 2021 to the best of our abilities. I have personally witnessed their tenacity and resiliency time and time again. I have the utmost respect for each and every one of them. Throughout the pandemic, the city never closed, always maintaining its responsibility to provide services to you, its constituents. All of our city employees held strong, sometimes with a limited crew, and then worked even harder as the year progressed through the city's partial close down to get city services ready to welcome back all of our customer constituents once we fully opened up. In many departments, services came back even better than before. And that's a testament to the caliber of individuals we have working for us, hardworking, full of compassion, and always willing to step up during a challenge. And for that, I'm proud to be your mayor. We have lots more to share with you of our successes in 2021 and so many good things headed our way in 2022. Many in part because of the groundwork and foundation put in place this past year by a dedicated team of city leaders. To begin with, Loreto, I am pleased to share our city's financial stability. As of September 30th, 2021, General Fund's unaudited fund balance stands at $45,328,636, along with a conservative consolidated annual budget for fiscal year 2022 of $845,333,325. Our general fund balance budget is $222,153,188 for fiscal year 2022. Furthermore, this is the 18th consecutive year that there is no increase to the city's property tax rate. In fact, this is the second year during the last four years in which the property tax rate has been decreased. The tax rate for fiscal year 22 went down to 61.537 cents from 63.4 cents for $100 assessed valuation. We're also pleased to announce that the city of Laredo has received outstanding ratings from both S&P Global and Moody's Investor Services, resulting in a high credit score that will allow for lower interest rates and provide confidence to its bondholders. It speaks volumes that even after an economically challenging year across the globe, our team has been able to maintain a solid financial base year after year. In regards to the pandemic, our health department, along with health authority, Dr. Victor Trevino, have done an amazing job combating this virus through aggressive testing and vaccination efforts, even though at first they were met with some challenges. Dr. Richard Chamberlain, our health department director, tells us more on how they worked through those challenges and how they are combating COVID-19. Hi, my name is Dr. Richard Chamberlain, health director, City of Laredo. 
vaccination efforts here in the city of Laredo were very scarce at the beginning with very low volumes coming into our community. We worked as a community to request larger volumes of vaccines to come into our community so we are able to provide vaccine coverage protection to the members of our community. It was a community coming together, to working together um, to better the situation. The stakeholders were essential. They were keystones in our operation. We are very fortunate to have our partners at UISD, LISD, Laredo College and Texas A&M International University that came together to provide us with their facilities, their staff working to get us to the point that we are at now, which is one of the highest in, this, in, the, in the nation, but yet in the state of Texas, um, the highest per capita vaccination rate. We are very fortunate we were able to acquire such amazing resources for our community to help safeguard their health and safety. This includes our mobile health clinic. Our mobile health clinic was acquired just a few months ago to be able to hit the streets and take testing and vaccinations to the community, into neighborhoods, ensuring that we are reaching our most vulnerable. Aside from that, we also implemented our COVID testing booth here at Laredo Health to ensure the safety of not only our staff, but the residents that do come to see us to acquire their testing. Lastly, our latest resource that we acquired here in the city of Laredo is the Iron Torrent Genexus Sequencer that will allow us to be able to identify variants of concern here in our community cutting down on the amount of time from four to eight weeks turnaround to 24 hours for the city of Laredo. I'd also like to say thank you to Laredo for responding throughout these last waves of infection to surveillance testing and most importantly to vaccine. I'd also like to reinforce that the city of Laredo has come a long way since the beginning of our pandemic in March of 2020. We have a set of protocols and procedures now that have been written into our history and we will continue to enforce them. Aside from the pandemic, there were also other health concerns and issues that needed our attention. Today, I'm delighted to announce other achievements for our community, including securing grants totaling $13.3 million that will create 54 new jobs in the health department, allowing for more public services and improvements in technology and, and operations. Establishing partnerships is key to bringing more health services to Laredo, including one with the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. This will allow Laredo to serve as a site for Alzheimer's and other disorder screenings, clinic trials, and treatments. And another partnership that allows Laredo to participate in a nationwide study on prolonged COVID-19 symptoms. Within primary health services, the health department now offers wellness exams for women and family planning services at their Santo Nino clinic. Did you know that patients within the health department can now communicate with medical providers through a patient portal? Yes, they can also access their records and results electronically. Meanwhile, at the Laredo Public Library, the pandemic caused some positive increases in enrollment. In 2021, library card registration was up 8%, and electronic and audiobook usage were up a whopping 264% compared to September 2020. Amazingly, all of these magnificent achievements and accomplishments occur while still managing a pandemic. Over the past couple of years, our fire department has truly shown their commitment to the well-being of Laredo. And you see it every day. Just look at their COVID vaccination rate among their firefighters at 95%. It's one of the highest rates among fire departments in the entire state of Texas. That's commitment to the well-being of not only their colleagues, but their community. And we sincerely applaud them for that. This past year, even while battling the COVID pandemic, the department continued working and keeping up with the growth of the city. They were able to acquire two additional fire trucks and three ambulances, each outfitted with the latest safety features, technology, and equipment, and three EMS supervisor vehicles to help when responding to emergency situations. Meanwhile, when emergencies include patients and cardiac arrest, each of the city's 12 ambulances will now be equipped with new automated CPR devices that will help increase survival rate among heart attack patients. And finally, in 2021, a group of young men and women chose to become firefighters and are currently training at two fire academies here in Laredo. 
Upon graduating in 2023, they will join the ranks of our finest in serving our community. And we couldn't be more grateful to them for taking on this noble career. Our city's emergency operations center, under the direction of Fire Chief Guillermo Hurd, has also worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic, most noticeably when vaccines were finally made available to us and by working hand in hand with the city's health department, giving us the best vaccination rate in the state of Texas. They also managed and operated two therapeutic infusion centers that together provided a little over 1,200 life-saving infusions for those in our community fighting COVID. Furthermore, they coordinated with the Texas National Guard by setting up vaccine clinics across the city and have provided vaccines to our local schools and continue to provide to visitors, residents in Robledo and even trucking companies in our city. One of their most successful projects was the Save Our Seniors or SOS program. Joining us is firefighter, paramedic and nurse Jerry Soto to explain more. Hi, my name is Jerry Soto, RMBSN, City of Laredo Fire Department, firefighter, paramedic. Let me take you back to where it first started. Back in January 2nd of 2021, as you all may know, we started with the TAMIU program, uh, vaccination efforts. We did over 6,000 vaccines in just one weekend. And of course, Laredo got a little bit crazy out there, but it was all worthwhile. And that brought about on January 4th of 2021, we went out to the senior homes, where we vaccinated all the senior homes here in Laredo, all six of them. And up to this day, the senior homes have gotten their second dose and their boosters. So the SOS program was brought about, it's called Save Our Seniors. These are specifically for homebound patients. February 4th, 2021 was the initiated, uh, was the first homebound vaccination program. And I'm proud to say that it was the first in the state of Texas. We were able to give this playbook over to the San Antonio Fire Department and to the Texas Disaster Emergency Management. Through the SOS program, we were able to vaccinate over 4,000 individuals. And from these efforts came out the HEART program, the Health Equality Assurance Response Team. With that program, we were able to vaccinate over 30,000 individuals. And also in March of 2021, the National Guard came to assist our efforts to vaccinate our community. And from there, we, we up to now have vaccinated over, we have given over 100,000 vaccines to our community. That includes from ages five and up. And as of right now, with the urgency of testing and getting boosters and getting our children vaccinated, we have continued our efforts and we have a uh, efforts going on at Park and Ride. The Texas National Guard has opened up several venues in the city of Laredo. Not only do they assist with the health department, but they're also at the outlet malls. They're also at Mall del Norte, Love's Travel Stop to assist with that population, the truckers, and uh, any special efforts that are being done with the school districts. They assist in those efforts. Not only is it uh, here in the city, but in our responding counties, Webb County, Hidalgo County, and Cameron County. They assist with those efforts too. It helps Laredo in many different ways. As we saw in the first wave of the COVID pandemic, our numbers were high up there. Then vaccinations came, our numbers went dwindling down. We thought we all normalized and here come the variants. And now it's back to the urgent need again. So with the boosters, we're able to diminish that. Not only that, but we had infusion centers, we had alternate care sites here in the city of Laredo to assist with those efforts. Moving forward, we're more than prepared to assist with those efforts. And also, most importantly, to give back to our community. And when our local hospitals needed additional staffing to open more beds to care for COVID patients, again, our emergency operations center coordinated directly with the state to bring down over 400 state healthcare workers to help increase hospital capacity. So as you can see, our city is not short on people who care. I, together with a city that's been devastated by COVID, applaud the entire team working in our emergency operations center, and we deeply thank you for all you've done in saving lives. You know, 
When we talk about a city that continues experiencing growth, a key factor in its success is making sure we travel from one location to another in a safe and efficient manner. Yes, mobility is always a vital priority for us. So today, I've invited Ramon Chavez, city engineer, for a quick overview on how he and his team, while working with our city leaders, are keeping Laredo moving forward. My name is Ramon Chavez, city engineer for the city of Laredo. Uh, the City Council approved a $15 million bond uh, back in August of uh, 2021, uh, which will bring uh, many projects through our city, uh, including traffic improvement projects, uh, right turn lanes, park improvements, and bring a better quality of life for the citizens of Laredo. So the Springfield Avenue Extension project will bring uh, mobility to North Laredo, but people are now going to be able to drive from Shiloh uh, going north all the way to the San Isidro area. Uh, and again, this project will also bring walkability and, and allow for people to bike uh, in the area. The Los Presidentes Avenue Extension uh, is a project that again is going to bring uh, mobility in South Laredo. Uh, this will allow people to connect from Cuatro Vientos to the Concord Hills area, which is going to open up, allow people to walk, bike through there at the same time. Some of the other features uh, along with the $15 million bond that uh, people will be able to appreciate are the Corpus Christi Beautification Project, which will go from uh, Cedar Avenue to Arkansas Avenue, and also the Sisters of Mercy Splash Path. It's no secret Laredo loves its sports, and boy do we have some amazing talented athletes who make us proud. So we're excited to begin planning for construction of a brand new sports complex off of Cuatro Vientos Road and Lomas del Sur. For more on what this sports complex will bring to our city, let us hear from my esteemed colleague, city council member for District 2 and Mayor Pro Tempore, Vidal Rodriguez. My name is Vidal Rodriguez, District 2 city council member and your Mayor Pro Temp. For the youth of Laredo, it's going to mean uh, it's going to have the utmost uh, opportunities for them to actually showcase their talents. It's going to be 200 acres, and it's going to predict to have uh, baseball, soccer, uh, volleyball, indoor basketball, and indoor volleyball, hike and bike trails, and three ponds. Basically, we have a lot of families that do travel teams, and they go to, around Texas, even southern parts of the United States, to showcase their talent. This is this will be an upbringing for them, for not only for them to go play for for talent, to also visit them, and they get to show their talent here in our local area. It don't open up the doors of opportunities for scholarship. Our jobs as in council members is not to make them go into the pros. It's for them to actually have a chance for a scholarship and they can continue their education and they could go and become doctors, lawyers, professors, nurses, etc. I mean, their dreams are what makes it happen and this is a window of opportunity for them. As we continue doing more to encourage kids and families to head outdoors, the city has been working hard to improve our streets and our environment. In 2021, $4 million were allocated to paving city streets. Even through the pandemic, the work never ceased, and almost 400 blocks of city streets were paved, an important project for council and management that enhances mobility and safety for motorists and pedestrians alike. This past year, we also began multiple drainage improvement projects. Many of these focused on the prevention of erosion in several of our beautiful creeks around town. Improving drainage to help eliminate flooding in parts of Laredo is always being addressed. In the area of solid waste, I know we have some of the hardest working men and women. Not one time during this pandemic have they not serviced our community. They continue picking up trash, recyclables, and brush each week even continuing with a semi-annual bulky item pickup for each council district at no additional charge to residents. Currently, leaders in the department are working on a solid waste master plan for the city's short, medium, and long-term needs. We also need to look at the beauty of our city through the eyes of local artists. Recently, we received a grant of $40,000 to fund several art sculptures that will be placed around North Central Park that depict our unique culture and we are certainly looking forward to continuing efforts and developing a very colorful and vibrant future through the arts. A home that is safe and comfortable is key for the well-being of a community. 
This is why we have poured so much effort into building more affordable housing throughout the city and making sure we have resources available through state and federal grants to help our residents when times get tough. Tina Martinez, City of Laredo Director of Community Development, will share more on available programs and how many people they've been able to help. My name is Tina Martinez. I'm the Director for Community Development for the City of Laredo. Through a rental assistance program, we were able to pay people's back rent and future payments because a lot of people out there had lost their jobs, had lost hours, had not been able to pay their utilities and their rent. And of course, housing is a, a major part of everyone's uh, life and, and, and just the problems that was gonna create. We also saw a great need for our veteran community and our elderly community. So um, community development reacted and was able to secure some grants to both be able to provide just for veterans um, the assistance to modify their homes and to also be able to um, ensure that you know that they got some repairs done to their to their homes. Also we, we were able to finalize a program a project downtown which rehabilitated an empty building into 15 studio size apartments for our elderly population because those two populations, the elderly and our veteran, are in dire need of, of direct assistance in our community. Also in 2021, we inaugurated our new building at 5511 Thomas, which now houses our Municipal Housing Division, which assists our community with affordable, obtainable housing, which is open up to anybody in the community. We have 600 rental units. You can come in, you can apply, you can ask questions about housing, and we can assist the community here. In 2021, we also saw our, our big freeze in February. That created um, us to react and open a warming shelter. So community development was also in charge of opening that warming shelter and assist our EOC, our emergency response team, um, help our community stay warm, stay fed. So we helped that and it was a great success and we were able to help our community. Approximately 210 Laredoans were assisted during that freeze with 24 hour shelter across five days with a bed, warm blankets, a breakfast, lunch and dinner. In 2022, I'm delighted to say even more affordable housing units are in development. Along with the rental complex on Convent Street, the city is also rehabilitating the former downtown Southern Hotel to create 22 additional units, as well as affordable rental units on Market Street, Sanders Avenue, and San Enrique Avenue. When it comes to our assistance programs to date, we are proud to say we've been able to award $17 million to about 544 households through the Rental Assistance Program, and we expect to help numerous other households that are currently being processed for approval. For our elderly, the tenant-based Rental Assistance Program through Home Funds has awarded almost $375,000 of rental assistance to 100 qualified elderly households living in the downtown area. An additional 26 low-income elderly households will soon be getting the help they need with four more rental housing projects about to be completed by the city. Now, during a pandemic, you wouldn't think building a new home would be at the top of the mind of many people. But yes, amazingly, in 2021, the housing market saw some major milestones. Last year, we issued nearly 1,600 permits for new single-family homes in Laredo a record which previously stood at 1,300 permits in a single year. This is a testament to the amount of accelerated growth that we're experiencing. Also this past year, a big shout out to our first responders who worked tirelessly enforcing law and order, especially during these critical times. Hands down, I can say Laredo has one of the best police forces in the state of Texas. Our men and women in blue, working together with many other law enforcement agencies, have made Laredo one of the safest cities in the country. PD, by applying for and obtaining numerous grants, has been able to attract a number of officers to the force, providing them with the necessary tools to keep our community safe. Here to talk more about that is our Chief of Police, Claudio Trevino. My name is Claudio Trevino, Jr. I'm Chief of Police of the Laredo Police Department. been fortunate to, to be aggressive in, in an efforts to bring funding to Laredo Police Department 
and augment the, the budget here in the police department to be able to extend and put more boots on the ground and key positions and key places with key efforts to enforcing issues that we see around the city. Uh, with regards to federal funding, we're fortunate again to, to bring in money from the federal funds, uh, specifically Stone Garden and Tee Off are, are two of the grants that are uh, should be highlighted, $1.4 million uh, in grant funds for Stone Garden alone. It allows us to work with our federal partners and keep parts of the city to be able to enforce human smuggling cases as well as drug smuggling. We have also intercepted weapons going south and ammunition going south. So we will continue to work with these funds and continue to increase the presence in the streets. With regards to state funding, uh, something to highlight is the $1.5 million that we were again fortunate to receive from the state that will allow us to bring online the ninth uh, anti-gang center in the state to be able to have that more safety to, the, to, the, to our citizens of Laredo uh, in enforcing key cases involving gangs, as well as multiple grants with, a, with a traffic enforcement with TxDOT that we bring to our city that allow our officers to be out there and uh, focus in key areas of the city where traffic enforcement is warranted and we are able to bring again more safety to our streets in efforts to, to decrease accidents in our streets. Thank you, Chief. The anti-gang center that came about through state funding is truly a unique program that another of my colleagues on city council, Ruben Gutierrez Jr. from District 5 can speak on from his perspective as a former Laredo police officer. I'm Ruben Gutierrez Jr., your council member for District 5. As a former police officer, I see the benefit of having a tag center. We are the ninth tag center in the state of Texas. And the benefit I see of this is state, local, and federal governments coming together as one to keep our community as safe as possible. Seeing what type of illicit, illegal activity is going on with the gangs around the state of Texas, around the United States, and in our city, which is very, very important to us. Specifically in the areas of trafficking narcotics, trafficking persons, trafficking weapons. So it's gonna concentrate on everything that comes in between there. Uh, persons are very, very important, obviously, weapons coming into the United States or leaving the United States. Uh, so it's very important for this tag center to be there. The tag will serve as an additional resource for surrounding communities and counties, streamlining communication. So the tag center is uh, streamlined communication between federal, state, and local agencies coming together as one and working with their resources to be able to have our community safe and sound. Once again, the efforts from our police force are second to none of any big city force, and I am proud of the work they do in keeping our community safe. This council has also taken a very serious approach in supporting and inviting businesses to come to Laredo. We've put together aggressive incentive packages and have been successful in bringing multi-million dollar companies that now employ our citizens and bring growth to our community. Our city's director of economic development, Teclo Garcia, shares more about the great strides we made in 2021. Hi, I'm Teclo Garcia, director of economic development for the city of Laredo. We, we happen to be uh, geographically right in the right place from the avocado market, uh, growing markets in Mexico, and the Texas marketplace and the East Coast. So we're in a great place to, to take advantage of that kind of uh, investment. Yeah, Mission Produces was a, was a landmark uh, uh, project for us. We, uh, we were able to <clears throat> recruit this company from California, Mission Produce, who built a 262,000 square foot avocado processing facility, uh, first in Laredo, and this facility is also the largest one in North America. Uh, Westpac uh, also is another avocado company, close to a $20 million project, um, and, and, a, and an $18 million investment, uh, pardon me, $20 million investment, and about 150 jobs or 140 jobs. And all these are well-paying jobs for these companies that are bringing in. And the economic impact of those is, is really wide in terms of uh, the, the payroll and, and, and then the, 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 the economic uh, impact that follows that, where retail sales and home buying and, and all these other things that come through. But, but those are two really, big projects. Another one is we were able to sustain our, our, our ranking as a, as a port in the U.S. as the number three overall busiest port uh, in, in the whole country. And uh, just to let folks know, uh, the Port of Houston is really big, but we do about $80 billion more in trade than the Port of Houston. So we're really proud to be able to keep that up. And we've got some more projects in the works that's going to grow the port even further. 
For more insight on the priorities of City Council when it comes to economic development, partnerships, trade, missions, and supporting both large and small businesses, Council Member Mercurio Martinez III of District 3 joins us now. I'm Mercurio Martinez. I am a City Councilman representing District 3. As a councilman, as a uh, city councilman, as a community, we are committed for creating economic development for our community. Uh, we are committed uh, to helping not only the local businesses that are already operating, but we're committing to bringing in others from outside to the inside uh, to help employ Laredo ones. So one of the things that we did on council is uh, we're very pro-active economic development. It's very important to bring jobs to the city of Laredo. And part of that is to partner up with Laredo Community College and, and, and provide the monies that are needed to bring in programs for the citizens of Laredo. Those that need certifications in all sorts of uh, industries like nursing uh, or skilled nursing and uh, welding uh, and uh, electrical and plumbing, etc. So we provide that seed money that is needed for Laredo College to continue operating some of these uh, programs. And then there, there are the citizens that uh, sometimes don't have enough money to go ahead and, and uh, apply uh, to take these uh, certifications and so we provide that money so that they can do it at no cost to them. So we have provided monies, um, now millions of dollars, in, in uh, grants to the small business that wants to operate. So you got a new company that is starting over at mile one, uh, which is an incubator uh, business. And so uh, they start their program, they start their, their business, and then uh, they, they, before they can fly, they need a walk. And sometimes they need some of that assistance. And we're there to provide them so that we can nurture or they can nurture their business before they actually go out and, and get their own office space. We're creating partnerships with some of our sister cities and we've got sister cities uh, um, agreements uh, with, uh, with, me with different Mexico uh, cities. And, and uh, for instance, in Jalisco, San Mateo, uh, we, we're in Monterrey. Uh, and so what we do is uh, because of COVID, because we were limited in our travel. So we're bringing a lot of those wares to Laredo and we have set up shop in the city of Laredo. We bring them into the, uh, to our El Portal facilities. We bring them into our, um, to our outlet malls. We bring them in here and we say, hey, Come to Laredo, the stuff that you were used to buying across the river, you can still buy them, but we're here in Laredo. Port Laredo being the busiest inland port on the U.S.-Mexican border is a reflection of our mission of being the best in handling international trade, which entails working hard and effectively with our federal and state partners and all other private and public stakeholders to continually be improving our bridge system and connecting road infrastructure to meet the competitive and fast-paced growth demands of international trade and commerce. And on that note, I'm happy to announce that we are currently seeking two presidential permits, one to expand the World Trade Bridge and the other for the new construction of the 4-5 bridge in South Laredo in collaboration with the County of Webb. The expansion project will add eight lanes for a total of 16 lanes. It'll include features such as the fast lanes relocation, the northbound way in motion system, additional lighting, electronic signage, and a hazmat collection system that'll facilitate the flow of traffic. The 4-5 bridge project is expected to be constructed in near coming years and will significantly detonate much needed economic growth and development in South Laredo and Webb County. Both bridge projects are needed and vital in improving our trade competitiveness by enhancing bridge crossing time efficiencies and connectivity to places of destination. Port Laredo currently crosses more than $200 billion worth of goods each year. In 2020, the bridge also processed over 2 million commercial vehicles 
And in spite of the ongoing global and U.S. economic disruptions by the COVID pandemic, with labor shortages, supply chains interruptions, and inflation, commercial crossings are still forecasted to continue to grow in the range of 3 to 5% per year. By 2050, TxDOT has projected that 5.1 million trucks would cross the World Trade Bridge, which equates to 42% of the total Texas-Mexican commercial traffic. Therefore, we are fully committed to both bridge projects and are moving quickly in obtaining the necessary governmental approvals. Already in this regard, we have made great strides through numerous meetings and presentations had with both the U.S. and Mexican federal and state officials. Moving forward also means removing bottlenecks that drivers frequently experience on roadways, such as the Mines Road, connecting the World Trade Bridge with the sprawling trade logistical facilities in the area and the IH-35 corridor that serves as the main artery connecting Laredo to the rest of the nation. And from the ground to the skies, Laredo International Airport also saw a boost in funding in 2021. Last September, Congressman Hendrik Way had announced over $7 million in federal funding to assist in the expansion of the terminal building and for various upgrades as well, including the interior spaces, public restrooms, mechanical and electrical systems, additional sanitation measures, and personnel and janitorial services. The funding will also help with minimum annual guarantees for both large and small airport concessions. Laredo, the world is taking notice of the unique and exemplary opportunities our city can provide. As a result of our unique relationship with our sister city, Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, the United Nations will be highlighting our symbiotic relationship, its strengths and challenges at international venues in 2022. Coincidentally, recently both the U.S. and Mexican ambassadors have sparked the development of a bi-national park that would strengthen international relations, tourism, and encourage a safer border. As we look ahead into 2022, I'm confident and excited that with the progressive steps we're currently taking, it will keep our city innovating for future generations, such as the current planning for a local convention conference center, completing updates to our water and wastewater master plan, securing independent, sustainable water sources that are much needed for future development, completing the already funded detox center with the county's help, along with securing resources for our downtown homeless population that is in critical need and so much more. As for my commitment to you, fellow Laredoans, I will continue to work with local, state and federal leaders to find solutions to our city health challenges as an underserved community and ensuring we continue to keep our border safe, finding safe solutions for all. Ladies and gentlemen, the sky's the limit. We live in an incredible border city that continues to grow and prosper at a tremendous pace. This year, as I conclude my tenure as mayor of this great city of Laredo, I can say with deep humility that I am truly honored to have been elected twice to serve and represent you to the best of my abilities. And I feel equally blessed to have worked alongside many leaders, public and private on both sides of the border, who are visionaries and have at heart the best interests of Laredo and the surrounding region. I am excited about all the good things we have done, continue to do, and will leave in place for others to benefit and enjoy. I can assure you that given the capabilities and circumstances that we initially faced, the quality of life now is so much better for all of us and for generations to come. May God bless us all in 2022 with much health, love, and prosperity. Good night. Dios nos bendiga y viva Laredo.